flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And dwelt among us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, Son of the living God, splendor of the Father, light eternal.
we come to the manger tonight, we light our Christ candle, and we thank and we praise for all the people that have shown us the way to the manger. One of the greatest things that we can do is what gift are we bringing to the manger tonight? And we think about little pieces of straw that we can bring a place in the manger, building the manger. And these little pieces of straw are our acts of kindness that we give. So tonight as we concentrate on the Christ life and on our journey, let's think about what we can give during the year in our acts of kindness to others. Let us pray. <coughs> Dear Lord, on this holiest of nights, help us to come to the, help us to come to you like children full of awe and wonder. Help us to bring our gifts to the manger all year long. Amen. says that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But one of the reasons we are gathered here tonight is that it, in Christ's coming, God promises us that he is eager to forgive us and will not leave us alone in our sins. So in confidence and in penitence, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, O God, word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forget what we have done. Help us to mend what we are. Thank you. 
of John, the first chapter, verses 1 to 14. Again, hear the word of God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and that life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of flesh or blood or the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The word of the Lord. On Christmas, we gather in the dark. That's unusual for Christian worship services. On Easter, the Church of the Risen Christ meets in the morning the very early morning, sometimes before sunrise, at the time Jesus rose from the dead to celebrate the victory of God. And because the resurrection happened in the morning, so usually do our worship services. Every Sunday morning recalls the Sunday morning that Christ defeated death and sin. And on every Sunday morning, we gather to celebrate. But on Christmas, we wait until nightfall, and we drive to church by the glow of our headlights, and enter a beautiful but very dim sanctuary. Christmas starts in the dark. And when we get here, we shut the door on the holiday jingles and the TV ads and even the jolly ho, ho, ho of Santa Claus. By gathering in the dark of winter, we stand opposed to the manic joy of the commercial holiday. Our, our culture works hard and spends millions of dollars to turn a winter's night into a beautiful and sentimental postcard. But here, in the dark, with the door closed, we have permission to look at things with clear eyes. Maybe it isn't the most wonderful time of the year, not for all of us. Maybe people aren't suddenly brimming with love and goodwill towards those they normally ignore. Maybe you can't hear silver bells on every street. Maybe it's just dark and cold. If that's the way things are for you this year, you're in the right place for Christmas to happen. Christmas is a great and glorious surprise, but it starts in the dark. <coughs> it starts with the plain <coughs> and undecorated recognition that this is not the way the world ought to be, that all the lights and cookies and sentimental songs can't, can't, I'm sorry, can't disguise the fact that something has gone terribly wrong. That's the world Isaiah knows. He 
he's familiar with the depth of the darkness and the cruelties of the cold. Most of us, thankfully, don't know very much about the boots of tramping warriors or about clothes that have been rolled in blood, though some of us do. Most of us don't know very much about captivity or slavery, though some of us do. These were common traits in an ancient world, but blessedly they are not as common in our own time and place. But even those of us who have not been in war and haven't ever experienced what it might be like to be a captive know what it's like to dwell in a land of deep darkness to stumble around in it, trying to feel your way. What it feels like to try to figure out which shade in a sea of darker and darker grays is the most white. Or to eat out a living in the face of greater and greater scarcity. Or to sit stunned and blind because all of your light has been taken away in the course of one great tragedy. The Gospel of John begins in darkness, too. Darkness that our imaginations can't even penetrate. In the beginning, it says. In the beginning. Maybe when you hear that, you're reminded of another part of the Bible. Genesis, the very first one, starts that way. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. The earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the face of the deep. But John goes back farther than that. In the beginning, he says, was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Maybe there was darkness at the beginning, the way Genesis says. A darkness of mystery. Dark because we cannot even begin to imagine it. Dark because it's so far away from our experience that it is a brilliant, shining, blazing darkness. What came into being in and through this word that was with God, this word that was God, is light that is older and stronger than the darkness. But what we drove here in the dark to hear is not news of an ancient light far away, even light from the beginning, even light that is God. What we came to hear was that the word that was with God and that was God, the word that created all things, the word who brings light, came into the world that he created and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We've come, in other words, not only to hear of ancient light, but of light that is new every morning. The word who is God was not content to dwell in the inaccessible glory of light while his lost and confused creation stumbled in the dark. He came among us as one of us to live for a time in the dark with us so that in the end eternal light would blaze for us too, even for us who have dwelt for a long time in the land of deep darkness. We drive here in the dark, and we leave from here in the dark in order to hear again, or for the first time, the news that those who have dwelt in darkness have seen a great light, and on them who walked in deep darkness, on them a light has shined. We drive in the dark to remind ourselves that the news is not only true for those who lived very long ago and very far away, but for us as well. We who have dwelt in darkness have seen a great light. We have walked in deep darkness, and on us light has shined. And the darkness has not overcome. The light is, the word is, God is. God exists. And sometimes in an age where people believe many different things, we can be tempted into thinking that asserting this, God's mere existence, is enough. But it isn't. It isn't enough for God. 
in the riches of his own freedom, in the riches of his own grace, he has chosen not just to be God, but to be Emmanuel, God with us, God for us. The light shines, not just that, shines in the darkness. God shows up when you least expect him and most need him. The world is dark and it is full of pain and sorrow and evil, and it hears and deserves and waits for the day of God's judgment. But when it comes, when He comes, it's not as if it's not as anyone ever expected. And of course, the blacker the darkness, the brighter and more astonishing the light. At Christmas, at least here in the church. We don't try to turn away from the dark, from the night. We don't try to deny it or look for the silver lining. We look it full in the face and name it for what it is, that this really isn't the way it should be, that we are oppressed and ensnared by the evil around us, that we are in the darkness, that we are in need. But we don't give the darkness the last word because God does not give it the last word. Emmanuel. God with us means that God has not abandoned us in the darkness, has not come among us in judgment or in open power, but it has instead come among us as a baby, has identified himself with us in helplessness and need, has freely taken on our oppression, cries with us in our poverty. And he does so not as an empty gesture of solidarity, but so that poverty may be made rich, and the oppressed may be made free, and the darkness be overwhelmed with the blazing light of day. The light shines in the darkness, so that all that is not right in the world may be taken away and replaced with good, with the very best. God comes and shares in a time with our suffering so that we may live unsuffering forever with him. It's the baby that makes the difference. Not any baby, but this particular one, Jesus Christ. At Christmas, we know suddenly that the world is worse than we ever dreamed. That even that realization cannot make us despair. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. <coughs> Authority rests on his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The Word who was from the beginning, who was with God, who is God. The light that enlightens all things has come as a baby. Just a baby. But that baby is stronger than the whole world. And what darkness will be able to stand against him when he breaks the yokes of our oppressors and burns the boots of the tramping warriors and establishes his kingdom of justice and righteousness forever? Merry Christmas, brothers and sisters. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not, has not, will not overcome it. So to the God of all grace, who by the power and work within us is able to accomplish far more abundantly than anything we could ask or think, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus, now and forever. Amen. Please rise and join me in professing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally
acknowledge you to be the Lord, and at all times we honor your greatness and glory. First, because you created us in your own image and likeness, but chiefly because you freed us from the enslavement of sin through your only Son, from which neither human being nor angel was able to set us free. You gave him in love to be made human, like us in all things except sin, that by his death and resurrection he might bring again life to the world. Lord, we are not able in our dullness to understand the breadth and length and height and depth of your love. But through to the commandment of Jesus Christ our Lord, we come to this table which he has left to us to proclaim his death until he comes again. Here we declare and witness before the world that by him alone we have received liberty and life. By him alone you claim us as children and heirs. By him alone we have access to your favor, freely shown. By him alone we are raised into your spiritual kingdom, there to eat and drink with you and the Son, at that most joyful table of eternal life. In this present time, we on earth have communion with you in heaven. But in the time to come, we shall be raised to that endless joy prepared for us before the foundation of the world was laid. God of all mercy, we pray that by your Spirit you would set apart this bread and this wine so that we may receive by faith the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ as you have commanded. And so be on him that he may be one with us and us with him, who has loved us and given himself up for us. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. <coughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And having gave, given thanks for it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after pepper, supper, he took the cup of wine and said, This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood. Pour it out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all of you. The bread which we break. Is it not a participation in the body of Christ? And the cup of blessing which we bless. Is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you and his blood shed for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who find refuge in him.
said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. Whoever believes in me will never thirst.
When you light the candle of the person closest to you, please bend the unlit candle and the lit candle. And that way, we'll avoid burning ourselves on wax. <coughs> please stand. Spirit.